Hi, welcome to Olio, my show. My name is Susan Rushton, and before we go any further, I need, as always, to explain what Olio means. One definition is that it's short for olla podrida, which is Spanish for rotten bowl or rotten pot, I guess. I just I just like rotten bowl better. Um, it's a Spanish-Portuguese dish, dish in it with essentially everything in the world in it. Pork in all its iterations, pig's feet and, and sausage and bacon, uh, in, in addition to chicken and chickpeas and spinach and garlic and onions and, and on and on. So in other words, it has everything in the world in it in, except orange juice and graham crackers. That's one definition. Another definition is that oleo is what comes in, bet in between acts of a melodrama. So you might have somebody juggling, you might have somebody singing, you might have somebody doing a skit, and none of it has anything to do with anything else, and certainly none of it has anything to do with the melodrama. So in other words, apples, oranges, and a monkey wrench. So welcome to my monkey wrench. Today, my guest is a person you must have seen on ABC News, on, on, on a variety of other shows, on, on a variety, in a variety of other places. This is Tomas Evangelista. Welcome, Thomas. Tomas. Excuse me. Tomas is co-founder of California Dreamers, and if you want to contact California Dreamers or Tomas, create pathway to numeral two, dream at gmail.com, create pathway two at gmail.com, or investigate Facebook, California Dreamers, and they have a Twitter, yes. Twitter account. It's hashtag at dreamers of CA. So welcome, Tomas. Um, so, and I'm thrilled to see you, and why, what, well, you are a co-starter co of, a co-founder of California Dreamers. Yes. How come? Well, you know, first off, thank you for having me on your show. And it's really good to be here uh, to let the community know of, of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, California Dreamers, uh, we started this um, over a year ago in February of 2017. And it's because we felt like our community didn't know on the issue of uh, DACA or Dreamers. And we felt like we really needed to come out and speak to our community so that they can put a face to an, the issue that's being uh, talked about all across the nation and what's uh, being uh, discussed in Congress. Mm -hmm. um, and so we felt like the community, our community, because we needed to know. And we call it our community because we grew up here. You know, we went to school here. Um, we have uh, friends. Yeah, jobs. Jobs. Yes. Things. And so we, we felt like we needed to do that in order to, to let help people understand and in order to, to help solve the issue. Okay. And so that's where California Dreamers came about. Um, before, before we go any further, tell me, what, tell me again. I, I have heard what DACA stands mm -hmm. for. Tell me again what it stands for. Well, DACA is, uh, stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, and it was started in 2012. Um, and it gives uh, deportation relief for uh, individuals that entered the country uh, undocumented when they were minors um, through no fault of their own, uh, just a decision made by their parents. And, you know, uh, the reason why DACA came about uh, was more because Congress uh, wasn't acting on it. Um, this issue has... This is, this is, so it's, it's a state issue or a, a, pol a presidential thing? Yeah, it's, okay. it's an executive order. Okay. Um, the president, uh, if you look back at um, uh, what, how, how the president uh, was able to do this is... Um, president Obama. Yes, President Obama. <laughs> correct. Uh, he was a, he was able to do this because it gives him the uh, in the immigration debate. Um, uh -huh. The president is allowed to to grant deferred action, which is an illegal status. It just gives we're on the lower priority for deportation, okay. and it's been done before. Uh, president Ronald Reagan did it, and also um, Bush the first uh, was able to grant deferred action to a group of individuals. So Obama. Took so even if you don't like Obama, right? If you, even if you don't like what he did in various situations, he's he what he did was not 
it was not unheard of. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, when, how old were you when you came to California? I was two years old. Okay. Yeah. So, you, you couldn't say no. No. <laughs> you, and you, you couldn't walk away. Maybe you could, but, and, but they would run, up, run back and get you. Right. Um, so, where, have you, where, where did you spend most of, your, most of your growing up years? Well, when I first came into the country, uh, I was in Santa Barbara. I start, that's where I started preschool, and um, that's where I resided for a couple years until my mother was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, by the age of six, uh, when I was six years old, she had passed away. Mm -hmm. And so that was a very tough time for our family, but uh, we had a very difficult decision to make because um, now that my mom wasn't here, you know, who was going to raise us? Mm -hmm. And so we had family here in Auburn. And that's, we ended up moving in Auburn. Um, our grandparents ended up coming up. And we were raised here in Auburn, California um, when I was six years old. And, you know, went to Alta Vista, Sky Ridge, ah, okay. Rock Creek, yeah, you yeah, name yeah. them all. Um, okay. You know, we, were, we, we weren't financially well off, so we did move around mm -hmm. apartments. Um, and I'm going to Evie Kane and, and the Pla uh, going to Placer High School. Uh, and at Placer High School is where I picked up running. You know, I was a track and cross country athlete. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how can you not be when you're in the beautiful parts of like sure. the American River? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you just go out there and you just, you know, want to spend so much time there. So when I was growing up, I, that's what I picked up. And it, it was for also another reason. I really had the dream to go to college. I really, you know, the very few years that my mom spent with me, she did uh, emphasize education on us. And, and before she left us, she did let us know that our family, that, you know, we to try to help us get an education. Um, and uh, once I, when I was 15, when I found out the significance of being undocumented, like what it actually means, because growing up, I mean, you're a kid. You know, you're, you're not. Here I am. And you're right, up here, here I am. And, you know, you go to school, yeah. you come home, you play with your friends, you do your homework. Some of That's, whom are also undocumented. Right, they yeah, could yeah. be. And so um, you don't really understand what it means. Mm -hmm. And so until you reach the age of uh, around 15, when you start thinking, okay, I, you know, my friends are starting to get their driver's license. You know, I should, I should drive or um, where am I going to go to college or, you know, a job uh -huh. especially and so you start looking into it and that's when you really find out and um you know i it, it you really find out what 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 it means and can you get a driver's license as an undocumented person uh, as a, as a, in, when in i the find DACA out you program? couldn't you can't well as a, in the daca program yes but okay. when you're not in the daca program um in california you can now get a driver's okay. license uh but in terms of college you don't uh, qualify for federal financial aid mm. um you know in terms of work if you're undocumented you should you know you're, you're unable to work um typically yeah mm -hmm. so um it, it's it's difficult. There's been a lot of changes where it's made it easier, and DACA is one of them. But when I found out, it was a very difficult time because my opportunities of going to college were very little. And so that's where running came in. You know, when I was, oh, yes, okay. when I was in middle school and in uh, high school, my coaches let me know, you know, you have big talent, you work hard, this, this can help you pay for college. Okay. And that's what it did. You know, after high school, I went to American River College, and I ended up running cross-country and track at Cal State Stanislaus, and I was able to get a, a small scholarship that I was able to Great. help for that. So. Yes. So, all right, have you graduated from college? Yes. Okay. How old are you now? I'm 28 years old. Okay. 28? Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. You look... Younger, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. So, and you're you have full time work. I'm yeah, assuming. I do. Which is this. Yes, this is part of it. Okay. So what what else is what else? I work for the Latino Leadership Council, and I do mental health and homeless outreach in the community. And the Latino Leadership Council is a nonprofit. And so we uh, help families connect to services, um, especially if they're in my type of work. I uh, navigate the mental health system with them okay. and connect them. I'm not a social worker, no. but what I do is I, I help a lot during the, those tough times where families do need um, support. How can one, is, does the Latino Leadership Council have a website? 
And if, or I guess if they, if people, it's called latinoleadershipcouncil.org. Okay, .org. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Latinoleadershipcouncil.org, mm -hmm. not com, org. Yes. And if they want to find out more about that, about mm -hmm. work, about uh, how to solve uh, some mm -hmm. problems that might seem unsolvable, right? Maybe they are, but maybe they're not. Okay, Latino Leadership Council. We focus a lot on health, but um, any type of um, issue that our family uh, would have, we would connect them to that resource. If it's not us that, that can help them, then uh, let us connect it to, to someone else, um, another like Kids First or other um, programs out in the community that can help solve. Okay. Now, I want to... We, we talked before we started taping about um, misunderstandings mm -hmm. of what... DACA is about what ICE can, I, well, we didn't do this, but what ICE can or cannot do and mm -hmm. what you or what you do or do not stand for. Um, can you tell me, I'm sure there are, there's, there are lots of, of people confused yeah. watching this. Um, some people who have no no problem about the possibility of being deported. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the the highest parts of being of confusion? Okay. Is there? What, yeah. What you know, a lot. Of this question comes up all the time, um, and uh, when people ask, like, "Well, you've been here, Tomas. You've been here twenty five years." Why haven't you you signed up for for legal status? You know why haven't you gone to the office and and done the paperwork? And uh, that's a very common question. Uh, and the answer is simple: you you can't. Um, when I found out what undocumented really means, um, I it means you can't be documented. Right, but but um, you know, and then you find out how can I apply for legal status. So when I was seventeen, I looked into it with my family, and we went to do di two different attorneys, and they both let us know that I was unable to. Um, I mean, there's no program there for me to apply for until Congress acted, and I. Th so they told me to wait until Congress kind of. And I've been waiting ten years, <laughs> you know. Um, that was in two thousand seven, um, and. Um, so that's kind of what the debate is right now is like, do we allow someone that entered the country undocumented as a two year old? Um, do we allow them to apply for some legal status? Uh -huh. um, and is it reasonable not right. to allow them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> and um, there are several ways you can. One of them is, of course, that uh, you through marriage, it, but you're not, you aren't able to without a sponsor, so through your spouse, um, or if you have a, a child that is over 21 that is able to sponsor you. So there are several ways, but in terms of if you're just you on your own to apply, you're unable to. Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and so when people hear that, they, do they think, well, of course not. You're undocumented. No. no. Or what do they hear? What do they say? Most of the time, they're surprised, or they don't believe it. They're, 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 um, of course, there's something you can do. Yeah, there's You're something you can do. You're just lazy. Right. Um, but I asked them, why would anybody want to be undocumented, you know, or illegal, how other people call it? Um, it's not exactly, like, what people think it is or what people tell them it is. I mean, it's, 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 it's a very scary, scary situation. Uh, you can be taken from your home, you know, all of a sudden, and in my situation, be taken to a country that I, I don't even know. Mm -hmm. you, know um, you can, I'm, as, I'm making a, an assumption here. I'm assuming you can speak the language. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you've never, you've, you don't, know how to m maneuver down there. Yeah, it would be very difficult. It would be an area where I, I'm not familiar with. Yeah. This is home. Yeah, this is my home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when people hear that, what do they say? Well, most of the time, you know, they, they agree. And a lot of people from um, both aisles of the issue, um, Republican or Democrat, um, you know, conservative or liberal, I've talked to many people. Um, on the Republican side, and that they agree, they said you should at least 
I receive an opportunity to apply. Because when you apply, it's not no guarantee that you'll it be granted legal status. Of course, there's a background check, which you're, you need to pass and not have um, any type of felonies or a lot of uh, crimes that have been committed in the past. So uh, you would also have to be able to pay some fees, some fines, and, and those sort of things. And so it's not guaranteed. It's not, it, you know, this isn't something that is given to someone with um, a felony. Mm -hmm. And so I, there's some betting that goes on, um, especially with, with DACA. And I think people are surprised about that as well. I think um, the assumption out there is that, you know, you apply, you pay for this, and it's just granted. No problem, just like no. that. Yeah. yeah, okay. A lot of people have been denied, and in, in it, most of the cases, it's not because they had a felony. It's uh, because they were unable to provide enough documents that they've been here residing in, since the time that they said they entered. For In my case, a Two, two years old. Um, so I had you to, should have kept the, the documents from yeah. that, that, that surely they gave you when you were two years old. Right. Luckily, um, you know, my family kept all my, when I went to the doctors, received my shots, when I started preschool, um, you know, we, we, we hung on to every little piece of information that we had to show that you've been here uh, continuously. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, okay, good. Uh, that, that's more than I've done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so some families that just, you know, they move around a lot and their their parents don't hang on to mm -hmm. stuff that at that moment doesn't seem significant. But when you're my age and you're looking to apply and you can't find it, you know, and there's been cases. There's a case of in Roseville, um, two 20-year-old boys that um, were applying they had the same exact information, twins. They've been through their life together. They provided the same information at the application, but um, two applications go to two different officers, USCIS officers. But one um, was approved, another one was denied. Why is that? And uh, one officer was questioning a period in time in first grade from June to August, which it's summer, summer. <laughs> yeah. yes and um he said there's not enough information oh please and so they sent it and they requested more information and the family was very upset because their one brother was already yeah approved you know he was in their high school their high school at the, um at that age and so they had to scramble go to the district get uh letters from their doctors something Jeez. and luckily they were able to do that but this asks the question how many people are going through this how many people you know um have the qualifications are able to pay fees but just don't provide that little bit of document mm. um and um, my assumption is a lot more than we think yeah okay mm -hmm. now do, have you been talking to some Sacramento uh, politicians and and in front of in front of the assembly or no? Okay. Th this issue need, uh, is going to be resolved at the federal level. Um, I haven't. I've spoken to a few, uh, but that's mostly um, on the question of uh, SB five four, which is uh, the California Values Act um, bill that passed. Uh, last year, but on terms of how to solve this issue, I've only been talking to Congress. I have uh, met with Doris Matsui, who's a congresswoman in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. I've met with Tom McClintock's staff, Doug LaMalfa's staff, and I've met with several others. Our, our, our two senators, uh, Kamal Harris and uh, Dianne Feinstein, and I've met with Nancy Pelosi as well. Good. And what is what has been their their response? Uh, you know. We just need to fix this issue. I've also spoken. To, <laughs> well, yeah, yes. we need to pass a bill. I've spoken to uh, also Republican uh, Congressman Jeff Denham from the Central Valley and Congressman uh, David Valadale, mm -hmm. um, and they, they everyone agrees on this. So it, when you, when I'm out there speaking to all these uh, congressmen, sounds like it's a simple yes. And we'll pass it, but you know things are difficult uh, in in politics, and so you heard it here. <laughs> things are difficult in politics. <laughs> yeah, complicated, uh, and so you know uh, people are asking more for it, and we're we're being, in my opinion, held hostage. 
to demands that I feel like shouldn't um, be brought um, uh, with our case. I think in our case, um, it's very simple. You know, there's productive people in our community that are undocumented. Give them an opportunity. You know, if they don't qualify for um, different situations in terms of cr criminal background, um, then you know. But and there's more. There's so many more who have no criminal background, mm -hmm. who have not committed fel felonies, mm -hmm. have who who are responsible mm -hmm. and and capable people, good citizens, mm -hmm. uh, good community members, who and here 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 you are representing them. Can you run for office? No, you, 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 I, I'm unable to run for office, um, or anybody's able, unable to run for office if they're not um, uh, citizens, mm -hmm. registered voters. Okay. Um, and so um, you're unable to vote unless you, you're a citizen. You, you, can't, you can't register to vote? I can't, no, no, no. Um, and, you know, that, that comes with, with citizenship, which... That may be part of it, part yeah. of why oh, I can imagine it's a great, it's a large part of it. Mm -hmm. that why why they they say well it's a great idea but but maybe we sh but but nothing happens right well <clears throat> damn mm -hmm. <laughs> oh jeez i i, I am <laughs> i am talking to tomas evangelista that one that that one tomas evangelista uh co-founder of california dreamers and if you wa want to learn more or Get information. You can email him at create pathway to numeral two dream. So create pathway to dream at gmail.com and investigate the group on Facebook, California Dreamers, or Twitter, hashtag at dreamers of CA. Um, so California Dreamers does what again? It's. It, well, uh, you know, my co-founder and I, uh, Doris Romero, uh, we speak out and we encourage other dreamers to speak out with us uh, in hopes to give a face to the issue and push. Because, like I mentioned earlier, uh, it's complicated in Congress, but the, but the power doesn't lie in Congress or even a president. It lies in the people. You know, it lies in people like you and people watching out there uh, to call their congressman to say we need to fix this issue now, um, and the more people do that, of course, the only thing that a congressman is afraid of is to be voted out. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, so I think if uh, the people get to know our story and understand it and know what we need to do to fix it, they'll call their congressman mm -hmm. um, and ask them to support this, to pass something as soon as possible. Um, and that's, that's, that's our goal. But at the same time, Doris and I, we, we grew up in Auburn. You know? mm -hmm. We uh, volunteered um, for a very long time since our high school days. Um, uh, she's done a lot of work with Auburn Rotary, Auburn Sunset Rotary. Um, we want to help. Mm -hmm. There's other issues. You know, sometimes like you know, our issues seem small compared to someone that's like homeless, um, someone that is is struggling. And so, there are other also people in our situation, dreamers, DACA recipients that are afraid to be out in public helping just because of what's what's uh, going on right now across our country. And so we want to provide them that support. So not only do we speak out, but we uh, create community service events. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things... For, for example, community service events. Uh, for one example, we, we uh, created, excuse me, 160 care bags uh, for the homeless community that we donated to uh, St. Vincent de Paul, Auburn, and also the gathering in Roseville. Mm -hmm. And these care bags included a lot of hygiene products, socks, um, uh, things that they need when they're out, they're out there homeless. And so we created these care bags and we provided. And so. And th these are homeless of 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 and people of all persuasions, not just dreamers. Right. Yeah. No. This is definitely. This is uh, right now in my line of work. I'm starting to see a lot of um, homeless families, and it's heartbreaking when you see not only people, but children um, there without a home, and they're unable to do anything. And so, at least we're able to 
provide small amount of relief. Yeah. Um, and we've we've also. Uh, served over at the Auburn shelter at the right hand Auburn mm -hmm. or no Volunteers of America okay. shelter I think it changed the name changed uh, yeah okay. uh, we've done volunteer work there and we hope to do work with our seniors as well um, and also hopefully any veterans that need some um, assistance and uh, we want to this is our community we don't want to see it suffer and we want to try to help and so California Dreamers also has that uh, goal in yeah. mind. Mm -hmm. So you are speaking, you are, you, as I said at the beginning, you, I've, I saw that you have been interviewed by, by, uh, by larger uh, networks than this one, um, and, and here you are, and you're, 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 you're the co-founder is, is, works with uh, Sunset Rotary. Are you available? Are the bo both of you available to speak to other groups? Yeah, anytime. I think uh, we just need to schedule something. We also have dreamers in the Roseville area, in the Sacramento areas that, um, you know, because when stuff happens across this country, people, a lot of people ask for people to be, dreamers to be interviewed, and I can't, no. do, yeah, <laughs> I can't do all the interviews. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so uh, we provide other other dreamers that mm -hmm. are out there and, and that want to speak. Ooh, and some, some, some will, mm -hmm. some won't, some can. Some are fearful, I can right. imagine. Yeah, yeah. We only have a, a handful because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of people are concerned. When I approached them with this idea, they said, "I, I can't." Even though they're protected by DACA, even though they, you know, they do. It's just, you know, what will my friends think? What will my, you know, worker, my coworkers think? And they're 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 concerned of the of the community. And I, I try to, yeah, I let them know that there's a huge. We have a huge support in this area. Yeah. So, do you think you are, you personally, are taking a, a, a good paying job away from someone who is a, who, who can vote, who, who is, who has, who was born here? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. I, you know, the job that I do, you know, I, I, I worked hard for my college education uh, since I was young. I've, I've always uh, tried to do my best, and I feel like... You know, I, I that that we're we're deserving of, of the job that we receive, and uh, you know, I think a lot of people have that idea that I, that I'm that I'm taking a job, but um, in reality, I feel like I earned it, and I think that you know we all need to kind of work hard for our things, and so I I, I don't feel like I, mm -hmm. I took a job. Have well, I. You know, we're, we're, we've come to the end of, yeah. our, of our conversation. And I, we talked at the beginning that, that this would be just go by like, right. like rapid fire. It's amazing. Yeah. I've enjoyed my conversation with you, Tomas. So this is Tomas Evangelista. He's co-founder of California Dreamers. If you want to contact him, create pathway to numeral two, dream at gmail.com, or take a look at his the Facebook uh, page California Dreamers and uh, Twitter hashtag at Dreamers of CA. This has been a fascinating conversation, Tomas. Thank you very much for being my guest, and thank you very much for watching. Thank you.